سازمان کانادا کمیته خارجی لایحه حفاظت از ساکنان اشرف مصوب سو کمیسیون حقوق بشر با توجه به اینکه حدود 3400 زن و مرد ایرانی اعضای مجاهدین خلق در حال حاضر در کمپ اشرف در عراق مستقر هستند با توجه به اینکه کمیساریای عالی پناهندگان ملل متحد آنها را به عنوان پناهجو به رسمیت شناخته است با توجه به اینکه دولت عراق در کار مقامات کمیساریا برای رفتن به کمپ و انجام مصاحبه های افراد در آنجا برای تایید موقعیت پناهندگی آنها اخلال ایجاد کرده است با توجه به اینکه آنها ساکنان کمپ در معرض یک ضرب العجل اعمال شده توسط دولت عراق برای ترک آنجا تا سی و یکم دسامبر هستند تا به ایران یا سایر کشورها برگردند و یا در داخل عراق جابجا جا شوند با توجه به اینکه ایالات متحده یک تعهد اخلاقی ادامه دار نسبت به ساکنان اشرف دارد و با یادآوری اینکه حملات گذشته به کمپ اشرف بلافاصله بعد از ملاقات ها با مقامات عالی رتبه آمریکایی نظیر آنچه امروز با پرزیدنت اوباما در حال انجام است رخ داده است با توجه به خشونت هایی که تا کنون دو بار در کمپ اشرف در سال 2009 و 2011 رخ داده است سو کمیته حقوق بشر پارلمان کانادا این موارد را تصویب می کند از دولت عراق می خواهد ضرب العجل خود را تمدید کند و زمان کافی برای ساکنان بدهد تا اقدامات ضروری را برای پناهجویی انجام دهند و اجازه ورود به ناظران بین المللی و گروه های کمک رسانی بدهد از دولت کانادا می خواهد با متحدان بین المللی کانادا و با سازمان ملل متحد کار کند تا از امنیت پناهندگان در کمپ اشرف اطمینان یابد خاطر نشان می کند دولت عراق مسئول هر گونه حمله به کمپ اشرف شناخته خواهد شد و از دولت کانادا می خواهد به فوریت شرایط را در ملاقات های دو جانبه و چند جانبه مطرح کند تا اطمینان یابد ساکنان کمپ اشرف فراموش نشدند و زندگی آنها بعد از سی و یکم دسامبر به مخاطره نخواهد افتاد اجلاس رسمی پارلمان کانادا کاندیس هاپنر نماینده از حزب حاکم فراخان به لغو ضرب العجل بستن اشرف و التزام دولت عراق به قانون بین المللی has been protected by the U.S. and coalition forces. However, with the U.S. winding down its, uh, its operation in Iraq, there are concerns that this will displace thousands of people who will have nowhere to go. Canada encourages the Iraqi government to extend the closure deadline in order to allow remaining residents sufficient time to take the required steps to seek asylum and to allow the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees to consider and process applications. We call on Iraq to meet its obligations under international law and to ensure that Camp Ashraf residents are not forcibly transferred to another country where they, they could uh, reasonably suffer. Canadians and indeed all people expect no less. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Conference Matbuati Namayandigan Parliament as Ahzab Mukhtalif Canada. We have held a series of meetings, heard chilling testimony about the situation and dangers facing the residents in Camp Ashraf pursuant to that chilling testimony best represented in uh, <clears throat> the words of uh, Colonel Wesley Martin who is a force U.S. force commander in Camp Ashraf as well as 
in Iraq and other testimony. We adopted a unanimous motion, which is available here, uh, both describing uh, the urgency of the situation, sounding the alarm, that's why we are here, and making express recommendations. Uh, at this point, I'll turn it over to Ross Hebert, who will uh, make the statement on behalf of us all. Thanks. Thanks, Aaron. Good morning. Um, I want to echo what Mr. Kotler has said in emphasizing the very serious nature of this situation. Uh, the reason that we're gathered here from every party in the House is because we are all seized with the urgency of avoiding a possible catastrophe. Right now, the lives of 3,400 people are at serious risk. They've been given a deadline by the end of the month to leave their refugee camp. Uh, our committee is, first of all, calling on the Iraqi government to meet its obligations under international law. They must extend the closure deadline to allow remaining residents sufficient time to take the required steps to seek asylum and to allow the United Nations Human Rights Council to consider and process applications. We also want to ensure that Camp Ashraf residents are not forcibly transferred to another country in which they could face persecution. We're calling on the Government of Canada, in conjunction with our international partners, to seek a UN Security Council resolution that would put a protective force in place to ensure the safety of the refugees in Camp Ashraf. I want to emphasize that our government takes the situation very seriously. I met just last week with Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable John Baird, specifically to talk about the situation in Camp Ashraf. He is fully apprised of the situation and has been working diligently with our allies to pressure the Iraqi government uh, to protect the residents of Camp Ashraf. He has also directed Canadian officials to visit the camp today uh, for the purpose of monitoring the situation. And also last week, the Minister for Citizenship and Immigration, the Honorable Jason Kenney, met with officials in Geneva. He met with uh, both the UN, Human, uh, UN High Commissioner for Refugees and also a senior member of the Iraqi Cabinet uh, to press for the protection of the people of Camp Ashraf. So we believe it is only through the sustained pressure applied by Canada and through the international community that this situation will have a peaceful ending. So just, just prior to the <coughs> questions, I'd like to add a comment. In the United Nations, it's an accepted fact that it's the responsibility of nations to protect. And sometimes those are glorious words, but this is one of those situations the humanitarian need on the ground is self-evident. There's around just over 3,000 people at significant and immediate risk at this time. And I want to thank our friends from the media for covering this, because by covering this and keeping the attention on it, we have the opportunity to make a difference in these people's lives. But it's crucial to remember that the United Nations is the force most appropriate to deal with this. Thank you.